giving equal parts spotlight to music releases by Mel Sayu and to the music groups has been my focus since the start of The Hand That Feeds HQ in 2010. Eleven years later, here I am talking about the music that has impressed me, suggesting you songs to listen to, creating lists on the website for you to find new artists, and learning about new music or old gems that I wasn't aware of. Your suggestions have been pretty awesome and, as always, I invite you to leave comments as you can be an inspiration trigger for me to create new content, or if many people talk about a certain theme, I can feature you all in an episode or two. Bottom line is, I keep on finding new music released in 2020. That's mainly because I still haven't reviewed some CDs that dropped in 2020, and others were because I had been avoiding the CDs in question for a wide variety of reasons. As you could tell from the previous episode, I came up with 20 songs that I consider to be the best released in 2020. 10 songs are already well talked about. In this episode, let's cover the remaining 10. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyu Lounge. Welcome to Seiyu Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today I will be talking about the 20 best songs released in 2020, part 2. In the previous episode I went over quite the eclectic batch of best songs in 2020. So here's the last part of this massive feature, including the 20 songs that I consider to be the best released in 2020 by male Seiyu, bands, 2D music projects and Seiyu units. Attention, highly subjective list ahead. Given that all these songs are thoroughly good, counting with fancy vocal performances, unique, attractive or intricate instrumentals or lyrics, there was no ranking made between these songs. Let's see. Zul with Ake. Zul made their first big album release in 2020 with Ein Satz. I confess that I was expecting something completely different from their first full-length album, something that capitalized on their dangerous or menacing vibe and image. I was rather vocal on how disappointed I was with the album as a whole when I reviewed it. I expected the group would carry over from their debut sound, only slightly upgrading their performances and thus re-record their debut songs to fit in Kotaro Nishiyama and Takashi Kondo. However, what we got was something... different. Out of the things I expected, I was only right on the vocals being re-recorded for Poisonous Gangster and Look At. Apparently, the sound that Zul had in their debut hasn't carried over. As illustrated by the single Bang Bang Bang, released in 2020, and Einsatz only managed to move further away from that sound, instead embracing a mainstream, intentionally edgy J-pop sound with heavy influences of K-pop in the mix. For me, Einsatz is an inconsistent CD, with many of the new songs being pretty uninspired. It had potential for much more, especially taking into account how much the members have improved their vocals and harmonies, and it could have turned into a powerful weapon for them. But not everything about the album was lackluster. There were moments of brilliance taking the form of Forore and Ache. I was torn between both songs as those were the highlights among the new songs in this album. I ended up choosing Ake as it is the song that best illustrates the talent on the vocal end that the group has. While most fans love the edgy image and sound that the group dons since debut, and many are falling in love with their K-pop inspired sound, I find quality and talent in their emotional R&B inspired sound, which is a first for them. If you are to change Zul's sound in any way, this is the way to do it. But this is just me, someone that prefers groups to have their own identity instead of following trends like their life and popularity depends on it. Back to Ake. 
atmospheric scenes with a retro touch to them, channeling 90s R&B vibes yet giving it a modern treatment, serve as the background to this beautiful song. Then, delicate strings paint a sweet, dreamy soundscape that you want to lose yourself in. I don't know about you, but I wanted the song to be much longer than it is. A minimalistic bass drum beat, hi-hats and clap track set a slow pace to the song. More emotional than anything in Zul's repertoire so far, and much more focused on the vocals than expected. I love the orchestral or synth stabs in the pre-chorus, opening the song only enough to make you invested in ache. The chorus is passionate, with the vocals carrying a whole lot of emotion, overwhelming the listener. Yuya Hirose goes for intense yet honeyed vocals carrying a lot of emotion. Subaru Kimura's raspy vocals add a bit of a melancholic touch to this track, whereas Kotaro Nishiyama and Takashi Kondo smooth this song with gentle vocals. Their harmonies in the chorus make chills run down my spine. I love when emotion is properly built around and carried over through the song up to the climax in the chorus. That is possible with clever songwriting and with capable, talented singers in charge of delivering that emotional blow. This is that one song from Zul that I can't get enough of. Came as a surprise and stayed for its quality in my list of the 20 best songs released in 2020. Mamoru Mienu with Beautiful Doll. In 2020, we didn't get that many ballads. Perhaps it was intentional, 2020 sucked, and ballads would only play with the fragile emotions of many fans, or maybe it was a mere coincidence and artists were more into crafting upbeat songs. Either way, there were very few ballads being released in 2020. Mamoru Mienu made sure that Void was filled with the release of what is one of his best songs he's graced us with in the past five years. Beautiful Doll is a textbook classic ballad with a jazz touch to it. Verses are slow-paced and emotional, with the piano setting the stage for Mamoru Mienu's passionate, gentle vocals, whereas the strings add a delicate, ethereal touch to this song. This is one of those songs that will pull your heartstrings. Its setting already carries so much emotion that Mieno's vocals only arrive to deal the final blow. A note that this song counts with lyrics written by Mieno himself, lyrics written mostly in English. Steady, soulful and heart-wrenching, Mieno's performance in Beautiful Doll is one to remember, certainly one of the songs that left their mark in 2020. Division All Stars with Survival of the Illest In the previous episode I talked briefly about how much I expected Hypnosis Mike to actually shed a light over hip-hop's niche subgenres and how I felt that the franchise hasn't been that innovative in their sound instead sticking to mainstream hip-hop and pop to deliver music that will instantly connect with their fans, as well as bring in new fans into the mix. As mainstream as the whole project is and how predictable some songs are, there are still some moments of brilliance, with many arriving in 2020 in the form of Mad Trigger Crews, Mad Trigger Crew before the second DRB, and Fling Posse's Fling Posse before the second DRB, and lastly with Division All Stars with Survival of the Illest. I chose to talk about the latter, as it would be rather difficult to pick just one song from MTC or Fling Posse's albums. However, it's worth noting that both crews up their game for those albums, delivering flawless and at times surprising performances. Now let's talk a bit about Division All Stars' Survival of the Illest. The throwback funk meets hip-hop sound in this song is exactly what I wanted to find in the franchise from the start. But more impressive than the instrumental that I thought would end up being the highlight for me were the vocals. The song is split in four verses and five choruses, there really isn't a true ensemble part in which all crews sing or rap together, instead, the song is split in a way that each crew has its own verse and chorus to showcase their talents. 
And this is where things got interesting. In a song like this, insanely groovy, four crews with different strengths and weaknesses on the vocal end and rap game went for completely distinct performances. Buster Bros gave a bouncy performance, pretty simplistic yet pretty much what you'd find a rap crew doing, improvising to a bit. It sounds free and fun. The crew has a good balance, being solid in rapping as well as in singing, with their chorus sounding pretty tight. Matt Trigger crew brought a completely different vibe to the table. The cool yet imposing air about the crew shows in their poised rap. With fierce lyrics, yet when it comes to the singing, the crew sounds apparently a bit slower and with less emotion or connection to the song. Yet the members still go for some legato in their singing, riding on Shintaro Asanuma's steady mid-tones. Flink Posse continue to be pretty unique as in their looks and vibe don't match their sound and lyrics. Plus, although their rap game is not bad, it highly contrasts with their top singing skills. They are doing some pretty awesome harmonies in the chorus, with Soma Saito's vocals leading this section, while Shirai and Nozuyama made their singing match is key. This level of balance is something that other crews didn't manage to pull off. As a result, their verse plus chorus combo sounds the most complete out of all Cruz's performances in this song. Matenro were the complete opposite. The crew exudes an imposing and touchable vibe that fits perfectly with their urgent, mind-boggling rapping. When it came to the singing, the group sounded unbalanced, mainly due to the members having polarizing singing tones and different levels of skill. They didn't have harmony in the chorus, but still wrapped up the song in their unique style. Survival of the Illust is the song that I consider best represents the Hypnosis Mike franchise, putting the spotlight on a type of hip-hop that isn't what you'd consider trendy. At the same time, it's a song that showcases the different charms of each crew, be it by their own sound or by the members' rap skills. Lolody with Addictive Whispering Perhaps the biggest surprise of the year and coincidentally debut of the year for me was Lolody with their album Univers. In this CD you can find what I consider to be one of the best songs released in 2020. Addictive Whispering is an unpredictable song, one that put me on the edge of my seat, eager to see where the composition would take me next. There's a tropical vibe running deep in this song, with a slow-paced groovy beat dictating the vibe and tone of this track. Seasoned fans of 2D music projects, and especially of the Tsuki Pro franchise, will instantly pinpoint the sound of growth and quell, and they would never be far from the truth. The composer for Lolo D's music is none other than Quell's composer. As a result, you have a dreamy song that demands a lyrical performance and that is exactly merging the best of growth and Quell in the same song. Add to its spine-chilling vocals by Toshiki Toyonaga, Daiki Yamashita and Shunsuke Takeuchi and you pretty much have a recipe for a tantalizing song. Addictive Whispering has layers and layers of instruments carefully crafted and mixed in a way that makes the vocals shine, yet being memorable without taking the spotlight away from those. I deeply enjoyed this about the composition of the song, it is subtle, yet every single element on it shines. The talented trio didn't shy away from dazzling everyone, and I can safely say that although underrated and still under the radar for many of you, Lolo D have, in addictive whispering, one of the best songs released in 2020. Soma Saito with Vampire Weekend Is it any surprise by now that a Soma Saito song will make its way into a list feature of best songs? Yeah, quite probably not, especially if you have been listening to Sayu Lounge's last couple of episodes. He's quite the gifted singer and songwriter, and since he's been in charge of his solo career by composing and writing all his songs since date, 
single released in 2018, as well as creating his own concepts, he's been delivering thought-provoking, deep and introspective songs that are tailored for those that love to theorize about meanings of the lyrics, deciphering double entendres, and going as far as what books and which authors have inspired Saito's music. Basically, Saito tailors his music to his geek level, which, in a way, makes the music apparently less appealing to those that search for easy listening music. However, under that misconception, some have missed out on Soma Saito's sophomore album, In Bloom, easily his best release to date in all departments, singing, production and composition. You're barely into the album and by the time that track number 3 starts playing, you're caught off guard. Mm, am I still listening to the same album that up until this song was giving off quite the dark and melancholic emo rock vibe? What is a dance track with a really sexy bass line doing in the middle of Saito's album? Wait, why is Saito even performing dance music? Yeah, not only he likes to create rock music with a really heavy emo vibe, but this time around he played around with our expectations. Vampire Weekend was such song for me. I was not expecting a dance tune to make its way into the album. Much less a loungy sexy tune like this one. Needless to say I was enthralled by this song the moment it started playing. I love the bass line, I am a massive fan of deep punchy bass lines lending a bit from funk and disco and this one hits all the right spots while being pretty minimalistic. I also love the subtle finger snaps announcing the entrance of the story's protagonist, but at the same time making you follow his actions from start to finish because this protagonist is that charismatic. The word plays in this song are clever, toying around with subtle innuendos and those vocals are incredibly enjoyable to listen to. There's something about Vampire Weekend that is familiar to fans of Soma Saito's music, yet at the same time, so refreshing, making this song pretty addictive from the get-go. This is so different, so unexpected, that you find yourself wanting more. I may still be talking about this song by the time 2022 arrives, it's that good. Vez rocks Isa, Sho and Reiji with Suki Sukis. Although this song was already well known among many of you, I actually arrived incredibly late to the party, only reviewing this song late in December 2020. So yeah, I almost missed out on this song, but I am so glad that I slotted it to be reviewed before the end of the year, otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you about it right now. The Vez Rock franchise has had its hiccups with the Play of Color series, with two of its entries taking over one year to be released. Issues aside, it was well worth the wait, at least for Vezrock Play of Color series volume 4, Strong Taste. The CD included Suki Sukis, song that is far from being subtle. Masahiro Yamanaka from Vezi, Yukitoshi Kikuchi, Rockdown's leader, and Takuya Sato from Rockdown went full-on sexy with Suki Sukis, song that came as a surprise, especially when you look back at the Vez Rock franchise and the last word you'd use to describe it would be sexy. As someone born in the 90s, as soon as this song started playing, I was hit by a wave of nostalgia. This is a textbook sexy pop song with a rock edge, because sexy in the 90s meant adding melodic guitar riffs to pop yet with a lot of R&B flair to it. This is exactly what was playing on the radio in the 90s, sharing airtime with Brit Rock's bands and 80s hits. Suki Sukis may sound a bit cheesy to some people, but for me it was an instant winner. You don't find songs sounding this openly suggestive, with pretty explicit intentions stated in the lyrics, and still having a rather classy, hypnotic touch to it. On the vocal end, fans got the best display of talent, technique and, weirdly enough, natural allure from the trio. 
Takuya Sato stole the show. Is the center for this song and he absolutely went off with the performance that made a lot of people reach out for a fan or a glass of water, whichever was closest to you in July 2020 when the song was released. If you're not familiar with him as a singer, Sato is quite gifted. For starters, he has a robust, warm, deep singing voice. Then there's his technique. Sato has improved a lot over the years, especially in the way his performances connect with the listener. And of course, let's not forget Takuya Sato exudes a mature vibe and is naturally alluring in his performances. In Suki Sukis, he cranked that up to the maximum and, well, the rest is history. He delivered quite a memorable performance. Masahiro Yamanaka was not that far behind as he also cranked up the allure and went off with his velvety vibrato, making sure no one forgot about him. Yukitoshi Kikuchi was the wild card for me before listening to this song, but after? Yeah, he was up to the task and delivered. I find his singing tone pretty unique. In a way, he reminds me of Hikaru Midorikawa's nasally singing tone, but he delivers his performances in quite the high key. In Suki Sukis, he added a fragile and gentle touch to a performance that, had Sato and Yamanaka been left alone, would have been way too much to handle. All this to say that Suki Sukis is one of the best songs released in 2020, deeply underrated but of a quality that will make you beg for more and more. Tsubasa and Ichiru with Aratana Color. Aratana Color doesn't shy away from being quite the funky, danceable, yet loungy song. This is a song included in the ongoing Neo X Lide series, which Tsuki Pros groups in SQ and Alive, as well as Pionix, are tackling. The premise of this series is quite interesting. In this particular case, and to avoid confusion to those that are not fans of Tsuki Pros groups, in the Neo X Lide series, Solids and Quells members were shuffled and the songs they have to perform shift between having solids or quells style. This means a shift between solids' dark, dirty and intense sound and quells' dreamy, clear as water sound. It's a massive change that, depending on who is teamed up with in each volume, leads to unexpected results. In this case, Solid's Tsubasa, voiced by Soma Saito, and Quell's Ichiru, voiced by Shonogami, teamed up, performing a song in the style of Quell. All this to say, Aratana Color is quite the experimental song, blending old-school pop with dreamy EDM while putting the focus on being groovy and pretty bouncy. Quell's trademark minimalism and ethereal sound shine in this track with the strings adding dashing accents taking the song to a whole other level. From a music production and mixing perspective, this song was well crafted. Pretty flawless, I must say. I love the sound stage that was created. The instruments aren't on top of the listener and instead are spread out at a comfortable range, while the vocals were taken to front and center although with some instances in which the vocals are split between monitors. The mixing is clean, with both voices being clear at all times. I love as well that instead of going for a regular unison in the chorus, the duo is tackling the same parts in the chorus, challenging those in different keys and in completely different vocal registers. This is yet another detail that works towards making the vocals mixing sound as clear as it does. The detail on the vocals, with those that leaves in the background further enriching the overall performance, adds yet another quality layer to a song that, production-wise, is off the charts. There's never a dull moment on the vocals with the insane skill set that both Solidist Tsubasa, voiced by Soma Saito, and Quell Zichiru, voiced by Shonogami, bring to the table. Shonogami is performing most of the song in his natural high range, and Soma Saito, although also pretty comfortable, worth noting that as he's gotten older, his voice tone has been gradually turning deeper. 
is performing a couple of keys below Nogami's tone, even when he is on the spotlight. This may seem like an irrelevant detail to those of you listening to the song in a casual way, but it is actually what holds this performance in a robust, charismatic place. Saito made sure the core of the song is powerful and robust and Shonogami showcases the range and flair of both by taking things further with his high notes and ad-libs. Their chemistry was felt in this performance. For all these reasons and more, Aratana Color is one of the best songs released in 2020. A must listen if you want an easy listening song with a positive vibe and inspiring lyrics. Wataru Hatano with Vivid Junction. By now, Wataru Hatano's Vivid Junction is no surprise for you. If you've listened to the past four episodes, I've managed to talk about this song quite a lot. Well, at the moment I feel like I've already said everything there was to say about this banger, but let's try to give it a new spin. Wataru Hatano is one of those solo artists that don't attract the masses. He hasn't made his solo career about his looks, like Mamoru Miyano or Yumu Uchida. He's not made his career about being a complete entertainer like Daisuke Ono and he certainly didn't make his solo career about showcasing his singer-songwriter self like Toshiki Toyonaga or Soma Saito have. Different styles for different solo artists. Some work better at attracting new fans. Miano and Uchida's pop star persona gimmick, with a big focus on looks, is exactly what sells a lot. Singer-songwriters tend to stray away from trendy music, so they don't sell well unless they have a big fan base to begin with. Entertainers are in a grey zone in which, depending on their music and concept, they can attract more or less people. Wataru Hatano stays in a pretty level and simplistic place as a solo artist. He performs a wide variety of music genres showcasing his versatility. Is indeed a good singer, no complaints about his looks, although this is subjective and, in my case, doesn't affect my enjoyment or not of his music, and is also an entertainer. This hybrid approach to his solo career fits Hatano pretty well, but weirdly enough, is one of the reasons why he isn't more popular as a solo artist. But that is something to talk about in more detail in another occasion. All this to say, his solo career goes under the radar for the most part. He does have a lot of fans, but they never translate into the sales of his CDs, department in which Hatano always struggles. But even if those sales don't come in, he keeps releasing tasteful, enjoyable music, always with a lot of creativity in the mix. 2020 was a weird year. And as such, he had to release his single Never End Summer as a digital single in the summer and then, in December, release the physical single with the same title and including one of my favorite songs released in that year. I am talking about Vivid Junction. Chilling, futuristic synthwave made its way into male Seiyu music territory. This was a first. Neon lights, retro beats, old school synths, and a simple, catchy performance were more than enough to take this song to my favorites. After all, this song was unique. There were no other Seiyu solo artists, bands, or 2D music groups releasing synthwave music, so bonus points for Hatano for managing to go outside of the box and bringing to the spotlight a niche music genre and making it sound cool. Hopefully this can start a trend. I'd love to hear more synthwave coming from Male Seiyu and who knows, 2D music groups. Giroaxia with Egoist Giroaxia were one of the most exciting outfits in 2020. Egoist stood out as their best single and its title track was not shy about its heavy and aggressive sound right off the bat. Explosive and fast-paced drums, urgent, shredding guitar riffs and a thunderous bass line create the core to this punk rock track, tailor-made to be played live. 
the raw power and energy in this song is off the charts, something that you clearly wouldn't expect from a band part of a 2D music project. I like this about Giroaxia's music. Their punk rock sound isn't sugarcoated to please a wider audience like what happens to most 2D groups. They are aggressive and loud and that adds a lot to their unique identity. I find myself enjoying their music as I do with rock bands outside of the Seiyu industry. There's not much I can say without giving away a song that is pure power and fun. Give it a chance and check it out. Egoist makes quite the good impression. Yumuchida with Image I've talked plenty about how much I love Yumuchida's singing voice and so far everything is released as a solo artist. A note that I haven't reviewed Shake 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 yet has been both surprising and fitting my tastes. Once again, I am not that big on pop music and I am quite picky whenever I have to listen to pop music as anything too bubbly is instantly a dread for me to listen to. Yumuchida does have a good balance between his music always exuding a positive, bright and sweet vibe and being able to go for darker, more intense compositions that still fit his image as a solo artist. Let's say this, Yumuchida is massively talented. At least that is what my experience and trained ears say. His control, technique, presence and voice tone are all of the highest quality. I've said it a couple of times before, but Yumuchida is an R&B pop artist. The single Over was an exception that appeared to showcase a different side to Uchida as a performer and ended up being quite the impressive release. Buzzer Beater is one of my favorite songs of his, as it is Loser. However, when Image, the title track, arrived, I knew that that song I was listening to was his best of the year. Image was released in the summer of 2020 and is quite the interesting piece, exploring R&B and EDM in a unique fashion, at least within his repertoire. It is a song that makes the best out of the dreamy atmospheric EDM sound and smooth pop-centric verses, however never forgetting to add the soul and emotion of R&B with punchy bass lines and on the vocal end, Uchida never straying away from delivering a honeyed performance in which R&B riffing is his greeting card. I believe that among all male seiyuu performing as solo artists, Yumuchida is the only one that always sings with an R&B flair. He's got a natural, melodic, smooth singing voice and his ability to shift between vibrato and falsetto make it only natural for him to be that type of a singer. Personally, I love that he has this unique singing style. It fits him well and ends up being more versatile than I expected. Now back to Image. The song is quite slow paced in comparison to other title tracks of his. Still, that slow pace is perfect to set the stage to the explosive chorus, making washy, atmospheric scenes slowly taking the listener to that place. The beat is sampled and minimalistic. I would love to watch this song being performed live with live drums playing it as it would sound massive. And the piano adds quite the beautiful touch to image. Once again you get that bright gentle image that is associated to Yumo Uchida as a solo artist from this song. It is tasteful flows pretty well and is catchy without being intense, just for the sake of being intense. Image ranks high in my favorite songs released in 2020 by Mail See You. I only regret having reviewed this song that late. These were the 20 best songs released by Mail See You 2D groups and bands in 2020. I can only have a smile on my face when I look back at the quality music we got in 2020. Wide variety of music genres covered, solo artists challenging themselves to create their own identities or further solidifying their already well-known image and sound. 
there were plenty of clever lyrics, unexpected twists, unusual songs that ended up being favorites to many of us. Trendy songs plenty and rock showed its grit and power in a year that had everything to be dominated by pop music. 2020 was that awesome in the music department. And with this episode, I wrapped up all talk about the music released in 2020 by male Seiyu bands, Seiyu units and 2D music groups. There was no shortage of awesome music, as you can tell, for the past five episodes. Many Seiyu have upgraded their skills as singers and in some cases as songwriters. 2D music projects are starting to follow their own routes and creating their own unique sound. Something that you couldn't even predict a couple of years ago when all 2D music projects sounded the same. Bands are more creative and many have matured along the way, culminating in 2020 with exciting and refreshing releases. I don't know how you feel about the music released last year, but I sure hope you brought a lot of it to 2021 as your favorite songs and or CDs. Now tell me, what do you expect of male Seiyu music in 2021? Is rock music making its big return? Is jazz pop slowly replacing generic pop as the dominating style and sound for 2D music projects? Let me know your thoughts as simple or as complex as they may be. I will choose a couple of replies to any of these questions and feature those on episode 30. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly mail CU and music related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of CU Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around. <laughs>